Hello everyone and welcome to this Blender tutorial where we're going to see how to go from this kind of basic visual to this improved version with additional details. So today we're going to discuss how to easily boost a basic material by giving it some procedural surface details and bumpiness. Also in terms of tooling, I'm going to use Blender 3.5 and here I'll be working with the EV render engine, but it's worth noting that the shader we create also works in cycles. Alright, so let's hop into Blender, and for this tutorial, we'll stick with the default cube as model. So let's just directly open the shader editor on the side. For now, of course, our object uses Blender's default material, which is a simple grey principled BSDF. Our goal in this episode will be to keep this principled BSDF mostly as is, and just play around with the base color slot and the normal input to get something more appealing than just a simple color like this, for example. In particular, we're going to heavily rely on procedural texture nodes and math noises, just like we did in this previous tutorial on how to make a cartoon flame effect, so today we're going to use those tools to auto-generate areas and details on the surface. Now, in truth, we won't go into a really evolved transformation. We'll just work on the overall tint and relief of our object, but you'll see that this already creates way more interesting visuals. Okay, for now, let's start simple and add a basic noise texture to our graph. If you've got the built-in add-on Node Wrangler enabled in your user preferences, then you'll be able to press Ctrl plus Shift and click on this node to preview what it looks like on its own. Typically, in our case, we get the usual black and white fuzzy patterns of Blender's noise texture. Now, suppose that we use this noise texture as the factor for mix node in color mode. Then you see that we can very easily have this black and white be transformed into a colored equivalent and thus add some sort of mushy spots on our surface. Of course, if you want, you can also use a color ramp node to do that, like we did in the previous episode of the series, but using a mix node can be interesting if you want your colors to be produced by other computations, because they can actually be inputted into the node. But anyway, we've now mixed two colors and created those blurry spots. That's an interesting first step, but let's be honest, this is really not that pretty. To instantly improve the visual, we're going to use a really cool technique akin posterization. Basically, we're going to simplify our noise so that rather than having those continuous tints of grays, it's a discrete set of clear-cut tints. Although we could of course do that with a color ramp using the constant mode, like we discussed in this previous episode, and manually specify which colors we want to keep and amplify with our manual marks, this would be a bit long to configure, and not as easy to tweak. Today we're aiming for a quick method, so we need to do something else. Instead, let's chain three math operations. So first, we'll multiply our noise by some arbitrary value, for example, 10. Then, we'll round this new value to the nearest integer. And finally, we'll divide the rounded value back by the same number as before, so here 10. If we plug this into our mix node as the factor value like before, we see that this indeed posterizes our initial texture as expected. It's even clearer when you reduce the size of the noise to get bigger areas and you add some detail. In a nutshell, what we've done here is a discretization, a simplification of our noise, thanks to this round operation in the middle. Chaining this multiplication, then rounding, then division, is a quick, and most importantly, automated way of removing intermediary colors. To better see how this arbitrary factor impacts the posterization effect, let's extract it to a value node and reconnect it to those two slots. Because for the effect to work properly, we need to make sure that we multiply and divide by the same amount. Then you see that if we change our value, the simplification process doesn't give the same output. Basically, the higher this number, the more subtle the posterization, to the point where it looks like we just kept our initial continuous noise. Conversely, for really small simplification values, we get less intermediate values and fewer discrete color ranges which makes for less tints and larger clear-cut areas on our surface. 
At this point, if we adjust our colors to our liking and reconnect our principled BSDF in the material output node, you see that we have simple patches of colors on our object that make for a more interesting visual than the plain orange cube we had before, especially if you're aiming for a cartoon, hand-drawn or painterly style. If you want to move those spots around, you can always plug a texture coordinate node and a mapping node before the noise texture. With the node wrangler add-on, you can do it with Ctrl plus T, and then just change the location values. Alright, that's nice, but at the moment, it doesn't yet look like these patches are really surface details. These color spots don't blend with the base that well. To improve this, we're going to play around with our material's normals. In short, tweaking a shader's normal is a nice way of adding relief to your surface without having to actually add geometry and weigh down your model. So it's a bit like the displacement technique we discussed in this previous episode on making crystals, but it's more efficient because we only fake bumps and creases. But anyway, so in our case, we're going to reuse our posterized noise to also compute the normals. And when you want to turn a black and white image into a height map for a surface, you need to use a bump node. Then you just link your black and white height map in the height input of this bump node, and this will produce the fake displacement that you want. If you want, you can preview the result of this node, and you see we get some flashy red and blue tints, so that might not be as intuitive as the other previews, but in short, what we're seeing here is the direction of the normals computed from our height map. But in any case, let's plug this 3D vector output into the normal slot of our principled BSDF, and reselect this BSDF as our output. And here we are. You see that our patches directly get pushed up and down by our bump, and we're getting really cool details on our surface. As a side note, you see that this can also be a quick and easy way of making fake topography maps if you ever need one. In our case, however, this bumpiness might be a bit too strong, so let's slightly reduce the strength parameter of our bump node and readapt our noise texture settings. All this gives us a neat style artifact, and it really boosts our visuals a lot compared to the simple flat orange surface we had to begin with. Plus, the cool thing is that, if you want, you can also increase the detail and roughness parameters of the noise texture to get more kind of granular metallic surface with really small details, and that looks a bit more realistic than our big patches. So you see that you can very easily change either the parameters or even the type of noise to create very different but auto-generated surface details. Okay, now for the final touch today, I want to talk about another nice style effect, and that's highlighting our object's hard edges automatically. For that, we're going to use a nice tool called Ambient Occlusion. Now, I'm not going to go into too much details here about Ambient Occlusion. To put it simply, it's a non-realistic, so a non-physical rendering technique that allows you to simulate global illumination and as such, it can help find the corners, the edges, and the creases in your objects, so typically it can sort of automate the search of object edges. By default, when you work in an EV scene, like here, this ambient occlusion isn't enabled, which is why, for now, our ambient occlusion node is just pure white. But if we go to our scene parameters and we turn the option on, then we click on the invert setting over here in our node, you see that we very easily get a black and white mask of our cube's edges. After that, we can add a color ramp to flip our colors around and make this edge mask white, plus also control the contrast a bit. And this way, we just need to add it to our previous noise-based mask and plug this new result in our mix node as the factor value. And there we go. In addition to our color patches and our bump, we now have cool edge highlights. Alright, so we're now mostly done with our shader logic. All that's left to do is to tweak the parameters to our liking, and we can get this kind of really cool painterly surface details effect that is just a mile ahead of the simple orange cube we had at first, and that didn't require that much effort, actually. Also, as a quick side note, if you want the shader to be even easier to retint to another color, 
you can take advantage of the fact that the mix node can use pre-computed colors and auto-generate the darkest tones from your primary color, typically thanks to a U saturation value node like this. That being said, it does offer a bit less control than manually setting both colors, so it depends on what effect you want to achieve. Also, as I said in the beginning of the tutorial, this is just a first quick and easy way of boosting your materials, and in reality, you'd probably want these noises, or perhaps other noises, to also impact other parameters of the principal BSDF, such as its specular, its roughness, perhaps even its transmittance or its emission. This way you could really create something that looks like the two layers of different materials are mixing on the surface of your object. Of course, if you're curious about that, don't hesitate to tell me in the comments, and I'll do a follow-up episode on how to go further with this idea. But in any case, there we go. Our procedural quick surface detail shader is now finished. So to wrap up the tutorial and reflect back on what we just did, let's go through our graph and group those nodes into organized frames. First, we worked on the main feature of our shader the posterization of a simple procedural noise to transform the continuous gray tints into discrete clear-cut ranges. This gave us a stylized black and white mask that we used for several things. One, we plugged this mask into a bump node to fake relief on our surface using custom made normals in our BSDF. And two, we mixed this mask with an ambient occlusion-based highlight of our object's edges to finally use as a factor value for a color mix node and compute our mesh color based on two reference tints. This final color is used as the base color for our principled BSDF, and thus we eventually get a more interesting surface with additional details than a plain tint. In the end, we therefore have a very easy to tweak procedural system to create more or less stylized patches on our object and instantly boost our visuals. And on that note, that's it for today. You now have a basic procedural surface details material that is easy to tune and that works both in EV and in cycles. I really hope you enjoyed this Blender tutorial and that you learned a few things. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, if you have other ideas of cool Blender tricks that you'd like to learn, tell me in the comments. As usual, thanks a lot for watching. And take care.